the brief history of video games. So, um, first video games were really developed on like early post-war frame machine. Um, so the earliest video games started on early po post-war mainframe computers. So a lot of like experimental coding, um, and as soon as like computers entered academic institutions, like experimentation just like went through the roof. So there's a lot of like students who, in their spare time, started like messing around with computer coding and create games. So an early example is is this game Tetris uh, Tennis for Two. It's built for an anal an old analog machine, and you know, as many of these experimental games were developed over the over the 50s and 60s, they start gaining commercial success, and this leads to the golden era of arcade. So, you have tons of like super iconic game titles that are still popular today, like Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Asteroids, Pong. Um, so they're mass-produced games. So they so developers and publishers started mass-producing these games um, in large quantities, and they can. Um, they put them in self-contained units that uh, dispense coin-operated entertainment. So, um, so like asteroids, that's Breakout in the middle, and that's Pong on the right. Um, those are just, those are just some of the many games that were produced during this time. Um, so as you get into the '80s, you have more you have more powerful technology that is able to produce more colorful games. So you have more colorful arcade installments such as Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. Those are just some examples. So now, despite the massive popularity, um, the American game industry had dark days ahead. Um, it was largely due to the fat, to the um, like the game pong had a really faddish and it kind of nature, like it was kind of like an on and off uh, um, relationship between that game. So this le this leads to Japanese influence. So while the American market struggle struggles um, during so in 1983, the American video game market cr uh, crashed. It was almost destroyed in the process. So this leads to, Jap to the kind of amateur Jap Japanese market coming into form. So, they so in 1983 they released a the Nintendo Entertainment System along with the incredibly popular Mario Bros. This is actually this is not Super Mario Bros. As, as some people might know it. This is the original Mario Bros. That was only in Japan. So then there was another game that was uh, became very popular in Japan called Tetris. Now, fun fact about Tetris is that it was actually developed in the Soviet Union. Um, but it gained a huge amount of popularity in Japan, and then this transit this, uh, transferred over to the United States. So uh, this leads to the development of home consoles. So in 1985, the, U uh, the NES was released uh, in the U.S. along with the game Super Mario Bros. Um, this this game held sales records that were unmatched for decades until we Sports outsold it in 2009, I believe. Um, the game, the game console was home to a host to a slew of legendary titles: um, Metroid, Super Mario Bros., Mega Man, uh, Final Fantasy. Just some examples. Um, it was an instant hit amongst the. It was an instant hit amongst the people who bought it. Um, it sold like its first shipment in like less than a week when it came out. So this, but most importantly, it helped rejuvenate the American video game industry because so the American the industry was kind of starting to like. Get back on speed, and this really helped the game get us uh, kind of helped accelerate that. So, another game that was that was pretty important was Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, it's it was built for Sega Genesis in 1991, and it still wows visually today. It was very impressive for its time. So, uh, so another influential hit was the Game Boy, released in 1989. Um, this is the original Game Boy. It was not the Game Boy Color. It didn't have color pixels. Um, and it was released with Tetris, and this was like a perfect pairing. Um, so it sold it sold a huge amount of units. I believe it was around 117 million units combined. So that's with its success for the Game Boy Color. Um, it was outsold by the Nintendo DS in 2010, I believe. Um, I think it was, it was some crazy number that it outsold it by. Um, so another and a game that was influential to the Game Boy success was po was the was Pokemon Red and Blue. It was released in 1996. Um, very, uh, very addictive um, adventure game where you gotta catch them all, and it stood and it has stood the test of time. There've been multiple installments over the years, and so in the '90s, the industry was going at a very fast pace. Um, there were more powerful consoles emerging, such as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and the Sega Genesis. 
they were 16-bit. They were 16-bit systems compared to the older 8-bit systems that offered more colorful gameplay and more in-game depth uh, variety. <coughs> So in 1994, Sony released the PlayStation. Um, this was a 32-bit operating system that was revolutionary for its time. Uh, it, allowed for, it allowed for more colorful gameplay, more game, ex, uh, game world exploration. And it really gained popularity when 1995, a game called Wipeout was released. It was kind of like uh, in a uh, space, space racing game. Um, so, another, so another part of the industry that's not really talked about much is uh, PC gaming. So it's not as popular as consoles because pro primarily because of it being more expensive. You have to buy your own computer. You may have to build your own specifics. But it still enjoyed some uh, exclusive titles such as Diablo, Half-Life 2, Team Fortress, and World of Warcraft. Sorry. Um, so in 1999 was a very good year for the PC gaming because three very influential games, Counter-Strike, Quake 3 Arena and Unreal Tournament released. Um, Counter-Strike in particular influenced modern military shooters later on in, uh, in the new millennium. Um, so, the third dimension. So, in 1996, the Nintendo 64 was released. Um, this was a 64-bit operating system that uh, allowed for third for 3D gaming. So you, could, so you didn't have to rely on 2D technology. It was a very big breakthrough in the industry. And it opened, in, it, it really just opened the floodgates for new game installations like Super Mario 64, there was Super Smash Brothers, like I have here. Um, and it was a very, it was a very influential uh, breakthrough. Uh, one game in particular uh, was The Legend of Zelda. Uh, Ocarina of Time was a very, it was, for, it was worldwide love, and it was one of the highest rated games of all time. Um, so, gener so the sixth generation in um, it was in started in 2001. It saw the release of the Nintendo GameCube, the Xbox, and PlayStation 2. It was actually it, that was released a year earlier. Um, PlayStation 2. One special note that one uh, thing to note is that it sold. I think it was 100 million units in five years, making it the most successful home console. So this really started the big three here because my, this was the, uh, Microsoft's first um, endeavor into the gaming industry with the Xbox. So you start having a competition now, um, seeing which console would sell would outsell uh, the other. So some so some notable games. One with Halo Combat Evolved for the Xbox. That was it was super a very influential first person shooter, um, and it was very influential in development of later games. Call of Duty was another, and and so was Splinter Cell. So um, just a continuation of this. Um, one thing that's very prevalent. Okay, stop.